Gareth, thank you. Apologies if I was talking a second ago. I was talking about drones, and uh, Ben was explaining we're not allowed to have a drone in the studio, but that's what you're going to talk about now. Yeah, we're because you'll have seen drones used for all sorts of things, particularly, you know, kids love them as toys, uh, but increasingly business commercial applications, and it is huge business. Thanks very much. Uh, morning to you. Uh, drones have, of course, gone from being a must-have boys' toy to a really important tool for many businesses. Uh, you may note they're already used for things like filming and photography, but uh, they also get used for inspecting roads, railways, oil rigs, all that sort of stuff and for supporting the emergency services. But, well, according to researchers, we could be seeing a lot more of them. There could be more than 70,000 drones in the skies above the UK by the year 2030. That, they say, would generate more than 600,000 jobs and help boost productivity across a whole range of sectors. But, and here's an important caveat, for that to happen, there would need to be big changes to legislation that govern how and where drones can be flown. Well, let's speak to Elaine White, who heads up a drones team at PricewaterhouseCoopers, or PwC, that put this report together. Morning to you. Good morning. Um, I've touched on some of the applications there of where they're being used, but all sorts of places now are using drones. Just talk me through some of them. So we predict, predict that drones could be a significant disruptor for many industries. If I took, for example, one industry that's already using technology mm. with quite a level of maturity, that's the filming industry. Yeah. We all enjoyed the Blue Planet 2 series last year, where we got wonderful insights into how those creatures lived within their natural habitat. Mm. This is because drones are agile, they're responsive, and they're relatively inexpensive to use. If you translate the unique insight that we got as a viewer of Blue Planet to business, you can see how drones will be used to give businesses that powerful perspective on what's happening within their perhaps significant infrastructure, if you think oil and gas, or dispersed locations, if you look at utilities. And also within society, we'll see benefits on how they're used by our emergency services. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people probably won't re you know, appreciate that in, in, in the sense that <clears throat> they used to be able to fly around big ships or oil rigs, as mm. you touched on, to look at things that, you know, it's very difficult for humans to get there. Um, but also we hear a lot, don't we, about things like deliveries. I mean, is that really feasible? So in order for last mile delivery to be feasible, there is significant changes that have to take place within mm. the regulation. Now, these changes are being looked at by the government, but it's not just about regulation changes that need to take place. There's also a degree of societal acceptance. We need to, as society, understand that these drones are going to present a benefit to us in society as a whole. And the technology also has to improve to allow this to happen. Yeah, because clearly there's a safety issue, but there's also a privacy issue. You don't want these things flying over your back garden, maybe if you're in the back garden enjoying the good weather. I mean, there's an issue there in the privacy and safety. And at this moment in time, the regulation protects the, those privacy issues and will continue to protect those moving forward. What's really important is that the, I served in the Air Force for 20 years and I saw firsthand how air power can present benefits to increase situ situational awareness. Mm -hmm. These drones have real potential to give businesses that increased awareness of what's going on across their estate. So regulation's got to change, but also, and, and also our acceptance of them too, but the technology, I'd imagine, as well, because at the moment, you know, the operator has to be able to see the drone. You know, we're talking about a future where these could be autonomous. They could just be going about doing their own thing without any human interaction. Absolutely, and there's significant investment being made by industry to try and achieve that state of the future. I like to think of perhaps where drones could be operating from a box down the motorway, where if there's an accident that takes place, those drones can automatically take off and go and take, take pictures of what's taken place mm. and send them back to the emergency services so that they can respond absolutely critically in those few seconds in the right way for that particular accident scene. And when we're talking about the value to the economy, a massive boost in terms of financial incentive to the economy, um, what does it mean for jobs too? Do we, do we see that jobs are created in people that will develop the, this technology or it replaces people? So we predict that there will be 685,000 jobs within the drone economy. Importantly, there's two different elements to this. There's those that will be enhanced by the use of drones and the emergency services being one example. The police force using them potentially for increased awareness of what's taken place within crowd control. But there will also be new jobs created. And these will be exciting new jobs that look at all that mass of data that's collected from drones mm. from that aerial view and what it is that we need to do, how we need to respond to that data.
Yeah, it's absolutely incredible. And the stuff that they can do now, we were filming just on Friday, actually, with the drone. So uh, really interesting to see them in action. Um, Elaine, good to see you. Thanks so much, Elaine White there from PwC. Uh, more from me. After Talk to us about uh, gas bills particularly now. Uh, yeah, more rises uh, on the way, this time from British Gas, but other firms set to follow suit. So we're talking about whether we're all paying too much for our energy. Yeah, morning to you. Uh, the latest rises at British Gas affect standard variable tariffs. Uh, you might remember that they announced a 5.5% rise on these tariffs back in April, announced, as we said, by Britain's biggest domestic energy supplier. It means that uh, the increase applies to both gas and electricity adding about £60 a year to an average bill, taking them to just over £1,160, a big increase. Well, that will affect over 4 million customers who are on what's known as the standard tariff, not if you're on a fixed rate, uh, but we'll explain a bit more about that shortly. Uh, but it's not the only energy supplier that's going to put up its prices. Other rises are due in June from Scottish Power, EDF and NPower. So let's speak to Claire Osborne, who's from the price comparison website, you switch. Uh, Claire, morning to you. Nice to see you. So, look, I mean, it's a familiar tale, isn't it? Price is going up again. Um, what can we do, if anything, to, to get away from this, to avoid such an increase? Well, the important thing to do is make sure that you're on a fixed tariff so that you're not vulnerable to these increases to the standard variable tariffs. And so these are the type of tariffs that 60% of the UK are on. They're a default tariff. If you don't make any other choice, that's what you roll on to. And so making sure that you're on a better fixed price tariff is important. Mm -hmm. And the kinds of things that you need to do to do that are, first of all, just grab a bill. And that's got all of the information that you'll need on it. So yep. your postcode, because energy is regionally priced, and your consumption, because you pay for how much you use. And you, doing that, you'll be able to get a comparison across the market on all of the different tariffs available. Could be saving up to £490 by switching. The cynic in me, though, always suggests that just when I get round to switching, I think, you know what, I'm going to fix for a couple of years and then I know exactly what I'm paying and I'm not susceptible to changes. They're just going to put them up anyway by the time I've got round to switching. I mean, it's just sort of, you know, moving from one bad supplier to another, isn't it? Well, so there are some really, really great suppliers in the market at the moment. Some of the cheapest also happen to be some of the ones which are topping our customer satisfaction okay. tables. And so you can get some really great service. And in many cases, renewable energy is standard as well. So really, really great choices. And if you fix, you are protecting yourself from those increases. And so, for example, there are, are, are 100 uh, fixed energy tariffs coming off the market today. And those customers, if they don't fix again, will be seeing an increase of £400. And right. that's because they've been protected protecting themselves from the price rises until now. So for those guys as well, incredibly important to take action. And why are prices going up? Well, so it's largely because of increases in the wholesale prices, which make up about 40% of the bill. And because we in, uh, um, import about 40% of our energy from abroad, we're really, really subject to international effects. So uh, uh, conflict in the Middle East is an important thing. Currency effects. Also, the beast from the East. That, that used up a lot of our gas supplies that we were expecting to be able to use for next winter. And all of that increases the price of our energy. Um, and what we're talking about here is particularly those people who are reluctant to fix or reluctant to move. They're on, as you talk about, that default tariff, the one that we get put on if we don't do anything. So, I mean, it's always that same message, isn't it? But if you don't like it, do something about it. But we can't stress that enough. Yes, exactly. Uh, and if you're shopping around, what should you be looking for here? Is it in terms of just price or you touched on service too? I mean, because what you don't want to do is because we're really cheap cheap one and then you can't get anyone on the phone. Yes, exactly. So I think it's really important to make sure that you look at the customer service ratings of those suppliers. And we recently did a survey of 17,000 customers, which you can take a look at on New Switch, and it will show you exactly um, how we rated each of those suppliers so you can make a really informed decision, not just to switch for price, but also to switch for a good service. Yeah, and that's such an important point. Uh, Claire, really good to see you. Thanks for explaining all of that. Claire Osborne there from New Switch. And as always, if you don't like it, either at service or price, move, because that's the only way the big firms will take any notice. Indeed. Vote with your feet. Uh, morning to you too. Uh, yeah, lots of business stories for you this morning, including these. Uh, news that the sandwich chain pret a manger is being sold in a deal thought to be worth £1.5 billion. Now, its current owner, that's the private equity firm Bridgepoint, will sell the company to a German conglomerate. Uh, Bridgepoint bought Pret uh, in 2008 for £364 million, so not a bad profit, 364 to £1.5 billion. Elsewhere, £3 billion worth of shares in RBS could be sold off this week. That's according to reports. A step towards returning the bank to private hands and 
Let me move that so you can read the words. Um, after the government bailout in 2000, there's nothing in it either. Uh, the government still holds a stake of more than 70% in the bank after stepping in with a taxpayer rescue during the financial crisis. I don't know why I'm going to nervously put it here. There we go. Ah, yeah, that works. Uh, there could be more than 70,000 drones in the skies above the UK by 2030. That's according to a new study. The report from PwC says devices that are used for everything from filming and photography to inspecting roads, railways, oil rigs and supporting the emergency services could give the economy a boost of more than £40 billion and create more than 600,000 jobs. And within the last few minutes, I definitely need to move that, uh, shares in the tech retailer Dixon's Carphone have slumped 27% after issuing a profit warning. The firm says it will close 92 standalone Carphone warehouse stores this year as it warns that customers are hanging on to older phones for longer and not upgrading to new handsets. Right, I'm off to get coffee. I'll see you a little later. Who did you upset to not get coffee this morning? I know, there's none in there. No Mine's fake outside. drinks on this side of the studio, Ben. Look, it's I'm real in here. I'm going to complain. Don't, don't this is not drink. fair. Look, Why do we not get any? Look, look that hot, nothing. lovely, lovely hot drink first thing in the morning. I can't even actually prove it, but there really is drinks. No, we'll even tip it out. <laughs> All these years, I was actually drinking something. Yeah, I'm off to get some. See you later. He's walking off now. Look, he's gone. All upset.